Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about networking files. This will be our overview for today. Resolve.conf, name.conf, host, and NSS switch. All right, so um, we're going to go over the first one, which is resolve.conf. Resolve.conf is a resolver configuration file. It's used by those resolver libraries on your computer, part of libc that are used by every single program to request DNS lookups. So let me give you an example so we can kind of see that. All right, as we can see here, it's generated by Network Manager, which is NMCLI. So if I do NMCLI device show, this will show the device that I have, which is uh, pretty much on one interface. You get the MAC address, you get some information, but what we're looking at is a DNS. So we have two DNS. So what that means is that we have uh, two addresses um, where we can um, look up uh, queries and stuff. So 192.168.122.241. Uh, I configured this one. So this is actually my DNS server, which this is the server that I'm on, the DNS server, um, as you can see in the host name. Um, the first one is a default one that comes when you like set up your machine because um, I'm using KVM. So that's like the gateway. That's how it kind of paints it. Um, on the bottom, as you can see, we have dns.professorlinux.com. This is the domain, uh, the DNS domain or whatever. Um, so I, add, I added this on here so I can search this domain or I can search this um, IP on here. So it has both. So it has a search and it has IP. And on the top of here, you have your two name servers, which are the two name servers down here, which are DNS. And then you have search dns.professor.linux.com. And the reason I have that one, if we cat etc. Dot, um, let's do var dot name dot d and then forward lookup. As we can see here, um, the start of authority is dns-server.professor.linux.com. So this is my uh, start of authority. As you can see, I have an A record here, which points to this IP address, which is the um, IP address that I'm on right now. So <clears throat> the reason why I put that is because that's a start of authority. This is the main uh, DNS server or the, DN, uh, the, the host name. So dns-server.professor.linux.com. So this is where it searches it, searches for the info. Um, and then over here, these are the records. I don't have that much up right now, but that's what resolve.conf is. Resolve.conf is pretty much um, where it can search DNS servers and stuff like that. It can search like the name servers um, for what it needs to do. All right. The next one is name.conf. So is used by bind. Normally when you make a request to bind, it checks its local cache. And if it doesn't have an answer, it asks one of the root name servers, mainly for running a DNS server. It stands for name daemon. It holds the actual DNS record. So it holds a record, C name, pointer for a particular domain or address. Uh, the configuration file specifies the type of server it is running on and the zones that it serves as a master, slaves, or stub. It also defines security, logging, and a finer granularity of options applied to the zones. So I'm going to show you what that looks like, um, which I think I showed you a little bit earlier. Actually, I showed you the other one. I showed you the actual uh, uh, record, so or zone, I mean. So we're going to do etc name.conf. Okay, so I'm going to, put, I'm going to pipe this through less so we can kind of scroll down and up. So here's the top. So as you can see, on uh, so this is only used if you're going to be hosting your own DNS servers because you don't need this. You don't need this file. You only need it if you're hosting your own DNS file. I mean DNS server. So I hosted my own DNS server. That's why I have this here. As you can see on the top, it says listen on port 53. So that's the default port that it listens on. So what it's listening on the local host, which is on the host that I'm on. And then I also am listening on the interface, which is my interface. So 192.168.122.241. So when host makes requests for DNS servers, right, onto this uh, to this server, it's able to listen on that interface. Because if I only have local host, it won't be able to listen to any outside uh, requests, right? But you also have to open up the firewall, too, to, to allow incoming requests. So that's another option. So if you do do that... You do have to have your firewall open for it to accept incoming connections. And then that IP address, as you see, that ends in 241. That's the interface of the server that I'm on. 
Um, and the reason why I have that again is so people can make requests to the server. And you see the allow query. So the allow query actually is saying only the local host can actually query this DNS server. But since I put 192.168.122.0 slash 24, it's, it's going to allow my virtual network, so any server on the virtual network, to make queries onto this DNS server that I'm on right now. And if we scroll down, <coughs> we can see that we have the zone files. So one zone is a professorlinux.com. That's the domain. And then it's type master. <coughs> and then the file is where it's located. So the forward.professorlinux.com.db. I named it DB, so that you can name that. Um, you can change your naming convention if you like, but that's how I named it. These are forward lookups. So anytime we're talking about forward lookups, it just looking up the um, like Google.com to an IP address. If you're talking about a reverse zone file, which is on the bottom one, as you see, one two two one six eight one nine two whatever. So that just maps IP addresses to. Uh, uh, a record so pretty much what it does is that the a record which is mapping the name which is google.com to the ip this will map the ip to the name so that's what a um, reverse uh a reverse a uh, record is so a forward record is like you know let's do ns lookup google.com this is a forward lookup if we do a backward if we do a reverse lookup is this pretty much this is pretty much a, re uh, a reverse uh, lookup, as you can see. 8.8, 8.8, and um, internet address, ARPA, name, DNS.google. So that's that's how it works um, in this instance. So we have the forward lookup, and then you have the backward lookup, because you're looking it up, you know, backwards or reverse or whatever. <coughs> All right. And then the next one we're going to talk about is the ETC host. So the ETC host database file is a file used by the operating system to translate host names to IP addresses. It is also called host file. By adding lines to this file, we can map random or arbitrary host names to arbitrary or random IP addresses, which then can be used for testing sites locally. All right, and if we go here, the reason why they say locally is because your ETC files, I mean your ETC host, um, just has like um, information that's like saved on there. So like example, let's say if you have like Let's say if you have a server on there that's a web server, right? Um, and let's say that you want to be able to uh, uh, communicate with it by its name, right? You won't be able to connect directly unless you have a DNS. If you have a DNS server set up, then it'll check the DNS server. So um, we're going to go on the next slide. It talks about NSS switch, NS switch, which we'll talk about it, which kind of has to do with this one too. So let me explain a little bit better. So let's say google.com, right? Let's say you want to ping it, right? So I want to ping google.com. The reason why this works is because it goes to a, D, a, a public DNS server, right? And that's the reason why it gets the information, and that's why it knows the IP address, right? But let's say I had a server called google.com in my local network, right? I, I don't want it to go th th through the Internet. So what, what, what happens first is that your operating system checks your files, right? So, which is ETC host, all right? If it doesn't find it there, then it checks your the DNS server, all right? So, the DNS server will be like a public DNS server. So, if I check google.com, it sees it doesn't exist in ETC host, and then it goes to the DNS server. If it exists in ETC host, then it will resolve it to that IP address that's in the ETC host file. If it's not, it will use the DNS server, right? But if you have a local DNS server, it will check the ETC host, then the local DNS server, then the local DNS server will point it to the public DNS server. So this is how it works in a nutshell. So what we can do is we can add 8.8, um, 8.8. .8. Actually, no. Let's add 1.1.2.2.2. .2, something random, all right? So I'm going to add this into my ETC host file. All right. And it's going to be uh, google.com. Then I'm going to point this to my ETC host file. And I got to put two, uh, two greater than because it will append it to the end of the file. If I just put one, it will overwrite everything. 
So now if we cat etc host, we can see there's google.com. So now when I ping google.com, it will check the etc host file first. As you can see, 1.1.1.2.2, whatever. So in this instance, like I said, it checked. So the files are checked first, which is the etc host. If it doesn't exist here, then it will check the actual uh, local DNS server that's set up. And then from there, it will actually um, roll it over to the actual you know, DNS servers on the internet to, to find you the correct one. So that's why, as you can see, Google.com now is mapped to something else. So if you have internal like if you have internal like servers, it it, pref it will look in this file first. Because if you do have like servers in your in, in your local network, it wouldn't make sense for it to ping the internet because it's not going to find it. Like it wouldn't make any sense to go on uh, the internet to find your local server names. You know that's why it looks on your local host file, and then from there it will look at your local DNS, and then from there it goes over. Just like a lot of companies have local DNS servers or DNS servers in their in their uh, system because in order for you to query other host names and stuff like that because it wouldn't and nothing would work if you would go to the public network because then those things are just like specially named for your you know company or whatever the case is all right and the last one we're going to talk about is ns switch which stands for name service switch configuration so it's used by the good news c library and certain other applications to determine the sources from which to obtain name service information in a range of categories and it's in order each category of information is identified by a database the first column specify the database name so this is the database shadow um, so basically when it's looking for like passwords or looking for stuff when it looks for for the shadow it looks at the files first to see if it's on there and then they usually have a backup but if there's no backup then and if it doesn't find it in this uh, system then it'll fail so for example, as we can see in ETC host, let's say if you have a server named uh, Candy, uh, Candy, right? For some reason, Candy, right? So um, it will check in the files to see if there's a server named Candy. If there isn't, it will check to the DNS. And if there isn't, it will check my host name. And if there isn't, then it will fail. If, um, let's say Candy exists in the internet, let's say Candy.com, it will check or, or Candy, uh, whatever the IP is or whatever domain it is, it will check the files first. It doesn't exist, it will fail. And then if the D, and then if uh, it checks it here and it finds it, then it'll stop here because it, it got the request. Um, if it finds it here first, then it'll stop here. So th this is the point of this. It gives you the order of how you want to check. Let's say if it's a local server that's on your actual like um, uh, on your network, and you put, let's say you put DNS before files, it will check the DNS. The request will time out because it doesn't exist, and then it will go to your etc host. Be like, oh wow, we found it in your etc host. Now we're returning the re uh, the request. So very similar, like like I was saying. So the order of this, if I do cat etc dot switch, as you can see here, we have. Um, so this is basically tells the system where to look for information. So as we can see here, um, the password looks on the database and then looks for files. For the shadow, looks in the database and looks for the file. Bottom where the host is. This is for the lookup for the DNS. As we can see here, it will look in the etc host file. And then after that, it will look for DNS. And then it will check my host name to see if that exists. So if I did like ping DNS, DNS server, as you can see, I ping myself. And the reason why that works is because it went to the files. It didn't find it. It went to the um, DNS. It probably found it here. It probably stopped here. But let's say if it didn't, then it will check its own host name to see, you know, if, if it exists that way too. So um, that's the whole point of NSS switch is the order of checking uh, for resolutions and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I can give you uh, one more example. If I do NS lookup. And let's say I'm looking for Google.com. As you can see here, the way NSF, NSS, NS lookup works, it's searching my uh, DNS server, 192.168.122.241. Since it didn't find it, it rolls over to a DNS on the internet, pretty much. And then from here, it got the information. You know, this could have been cached, or this, this could be cached, possibly. Because if it is cached, then 
um, you know, you're going to get this information. So you can always flush your cache out too. But let's say if I'm doing pinging it, when I ping it, this program searches the um, files on your host first. Um, and then I can also do this. Since I, since I have my own DNS server, I can do NS lookup. I can do web server server 2. If I do that, you see it doesn't exist. It said NX domain doesn't exist. So there's no resolution, even if it's on my web server, because with, with a lot of these, like you have to actually add the domain on the end of it in order for it to find it, to get the IP. And if I do it this way, as you can see, web server dash two, professor linux.com, 192.168.122.207. So if I try to go to web server dot two, dot professor linux.com, this kind of gives it the IP pretty much. And then all I need to do is just put the user, I want to be root, and I want to log into them. And I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to do root. It possibly can fail because I don't think I have, I don't think I'm allowed to log in as root because I have that disabled. But either way, the whole point of it is that this, uh, this name gets translated uh, from a local DNS server to this IP, 192.168.122.207. Um, by root, but I'm not able to log in because I have that disabled. Because um, for security, usually it doesn't let you it doesn't let people remotely log in as root because then you can do a lot of damage to their systems. Um, but yeah, but that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you guys want like more of a detailed explanation, um, I can definitely help you out. Um, so let's go back to some of these just so I can try to um, try to uh, give you a better overview again. Just for last, um, so remember the resolve.conf is where uh, the system checks for the name servers um, to resolve uh, to resolve information. Um, so that's basically so the resolve.conf is the DNS part of the um, NSS switch. So as you saw that DNS, that's where the resolve.conf. So the first thing it does from NSS, NSS switch. It searches the host file because that's how I have it set up. I have the host files first. It checks there, and if it doesn't exist, then it goes to the resolve.conf, and then it pings those name servers. Name D, remember, name D, all it is is if you want to host your own uh, DNS server. So name D has nothing to do with, like, regular users. So name D does not ma name D.conf does not make any difference. So like I said, name D only matters. That's just for setting up and configuring your DNS uh, server. So the main important files that we're looking at here is the NSS switch because the NSS switch tells the operating system where to look. So like I said, if you had, um, let's say if you um, have Google.com, it will search the ETC host. If it doesn't exist there, then it will go to the ETC resolve.conf and then it will check the name servers. And then from the name servers, it eventually gets to the point where it finds the actual IP address of Google.com. If you have Google.com mapped to a different IP address, it will check ETC host, and then from ETC host, it will say, hey, look, this IP address already exists. We don't have to do a DNS query. We can just stop here. But let's say vice versa. Let's say you have it set up, so it checks the DNS first, and you have like web server two, which is the local um, server that you have um, on your network. It will check the DNS, and then it will fail because it doesn't exist on the internet, and then boom, it will come back to ETC host, and then it will find it, and it will return it. So it doesn't matter the order you do it. I mean, it does matter depending on like how you have your infrastructure set up. But the whole point of these files, the main two files that you're worried about, about resolving IPs and all that or resolving information is the Etsy host and the resolve.conf. Resolve.conf gives you the name servers. Um, the host file just gives you what you have mapped on there locally to find um, local information faster name d is for dns configuration like for your servers and stuff and S and name server uh, switch is pretty much to, um, for your system to be able to query files to find to find uh, the names of it and, and information about it um, and that's pretty much it um, thank you guys for watching and um, have a great day